This evil anti-Semitic attack is an assault on all of us. It's an assault on humanity. The president's not, is not responsible for these acts. Again, the very first action that the president did was condemn uh, these heinous acts. The very first thing that the media did was condemn the president. Yeah, I think this president's whole modus operandi uh, is to divide us. A lot of talk about what the president has said, didn't say, did, didn't do in reaction to not only the pipe bombings, but the shooting at the synagogue in Pittsburgh as the fallout continues eight days from the midterms. Let's bring in our panel from D.C. Britt Hume, Fox News senior political analyst, Susan Page, Washington bureau chief at USA Today, and in our Los Angeles bureau, Larry Elder, nationally syndicated radio host. Thank you all for being here. Uh, Britt, your thoughts on the fallout from the weekend? Well, it illustrates something that uh, you may have heard me say before, Brett, which is that one of Trump's failings is that he thinks everything is about him, and one of his critics' failings is, are, is that, they, that, that they do too. And this weekend's reaction to these hideous atrocities from last week, uh, particularly the one in Pittsburgh, illustrate that perfectly. People were, were finding a way to blame him. And look I, I, look, I think he could elevate the tone of our discourse more than he has and so on, but the idea that he is somehow responsible for creating a kind of atmosphere in which this sort of behavior is encouraged, I think is nonsense, and I think it's, it's basically unfair to him. Yeah, the president did tweet, and it raised some more eyebrows, as I mentioned earlier with Governor Walker. Uh, two of the tweets did. There is great anger in our country caused in part by inaccurate, even fraudulent reporting of the news. The fake news media, the true enemy of the people, must stop open and obvious hostility and report the news accurately and fairly. That will do much to put out the flame of anger and outrage, and we will then be able to bring all sides together in peace and harmony. Fake news must end. Uh, the president was talked about today on CNN uh, with an interesting exchange. Just take a listen real quick. This president has radicalized so many more people than ISIS ever did. I mean, the way he talks, the way he, the way he. That is, that's just, it's, it's The way he to talks. The, on, for you not to push back on that. You're about to push back. I'm about to bring that's it For her to say that the president of the United States has radicalized more people than ISIS is irresponsible. Yeah. Susan, what do you think of all this? Well, I, th I think it's not a helpful, healthy dialogue we have going on in this country with that exchange. I think deranged people are responsible for deranged actions, not, not officials. I, d I do find it pretty chilling, however, when the president calls the press the enemy of the people. That is not what I think the press does. It's not the role that the founders had in mind for the press. It's not the why the press is protected by the Constitution. I think it's just future, it just continues to inflame a situation that I think, I think is a concern of a lot of Americans. And I think the president missed an opportunity in the wake of these uh, several horrific events over the last few days to take a kind of a bigger tone, uh, a more conciliatory tone, taking the role that presidents have taken in the past after times of big national trauma. Brad, let me just interject one thought here. Yeah, I, I mean, I, Trump I, supporters do say... Well, they just, do say, Britt, that Trump supporters say that, that, that he's talking about fake news and not the press overall, but right. they tried to get him to list who, at the White House, who the fake news media is, and they wouldn't play that game. Well, Go I would ahead, just Britt, say report. this. I don't, think the, I don't think the press are the enemy of the people, but I do think that the mainstream media has proved itself, to, proves themselves to be the enemy of Trump, which is not to say that he should say they're the enemy of the people. But there is a, there's been a, a spate of bad and biased reporting, such as I've never seen in the 50 years I've been in this business, concerning him. And his belly aching about it may not get him very far, but some of it's justified. Larry. Well, as far as I'm concerned, there's no question that Donald Trump has a legitimate beef when he talks about uh, media being biased. And that's what I'm what I interpret him as meaning when he says fake news. I mean, look at the Washington Post and the New York Times, two of our arguably most important news organizations. The Washington Post has never endorsed a Republican president in its entire, its, its entire history, uh, not even Reagan over Jimmy Carter. Uh, the New York Times has not endorsed a Republican since 1956. And even uh, uh, organizations like Pew Research say that ABC, NBC, uh, CBS, their nightly news coverage anyway, over 90 percent anti-Donald Trump uh, uh, coverage.
Uh, there's a book called Left Turn by a, a professor named Tim Grossclose, a friend of mine, who teaches at George Mason University. And for the first time, uh, a professor tried to quantify the effect of a biased media on how people vote. Uh, and he argues that if the media were truly fair and balanced, which is what Fox's slogan is, uh, the typical state would vote the way Texas does, which is about eight to 10 points in favor of Republican. So there's no question that the biased news media has a negative effect uh, on how people vote if you're a Republican. I think Donald Trump is right to call him out on it. And there's a distinction between the media and fake news media, which is what he's, in my opinion, trying to make. Well, panel, we appreciate it. We had two big interviews on there. We apologize, shorter time. Thank you all.